وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي uh, I have to uh, mention that if you see me move like a robot uh, it's because uh, I do have a chronic case of uh, benign positional vertigo meaning that every now and then I get dizzy and it takes you know about 24 hours to 36 hours and that's why I had to uh, cancel my uh, khutbah yesterday at the London Muslim Mosque because it was at the peak of that uh, situation but today inshallah uh, I feel that I need to uh, discuss this issue of promoting honor and campaigning against violence which I have been telling uh, Rina and Yasmin for the last four or five months I will do it, I will do it, I will do it so finally inshallah the time has come and uh, I would like to uh, share this beautiful experience hopefully we will be able to end up promoting honor and living it not only talking about it uh, to start with uh, I would like to bring to our attention something that probably all of us know about that not too far from here there are people who are promoting the same thing that we are trying to promote right here at the London Muslim Mosque uh, it is the same kind of thing they are promoting peace and they are gathering at the uh, uh, Victoria Park the same as there are people in Ottawa, in Toronto and other cities in Canada <coughs> trying to promote peace and we are promoting peace as well the difference is that they are promoting peace outside home we are promoting peace inside home but peace it is it is that unfortunately illusion that all of us seem lately to be running after and it seems that the more we are running after it it is running away from us and let us ask why two weeks ago I started my Friday sermon at the Islamic Center with a riddle and I'm not going to repeat that riddle because some of you might have been present at the Friday sermon at the Islamic Center two weeks ago I was talking among other things about the mission of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and I did mention that his mission was summarized four times in the Quran in four different places and it is very important for us to understand what the mission of the final messenger to humanity is so that we can decide where we fit vis-a-vis -vis that mission it was mentioned twice in chapter 2 Surah Al-Baqarah, once in chapter 3, Surah Al-Imran, and once in Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Now, that mission is summarized in the following. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Almighty, wanted Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to yatlu alayhim ayatihi وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ There are four things that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was sent to share, to teach, to, to accomplish and it will help if we know things in focus. Number one, he was asked by God to recite the verses the words of God in front of us. So this is the Quran. So the first thing in the mission of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
is to recite the Quran. Tell us what God wants of us. Number two, to teach us the implication of what's in the recitation. It's not enough to just recite the Quran. We have to learn what's in the Quran. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ Teach them what's in that book. وَالْحِكْمَةِ And teach them wisdom. Teach them wisdom. And this is where I will come back. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And to help them to purify their inner selves. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Now, let me go back to that thing that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked to teach us wisdom. Now, I bring to our attention that wisdom that is mentioned here is something that is taught to all of us, but it is given as a favor by the Almighty God to all his prophets. Prophets are endowed with wisdom. God gives them that commodity, that quality, that ability directly. And we read that in the Quran as well in Surah Al-Imran. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ And remember when God took the covenant of all the prophets based on the book that I have given you by the word book in singular, it means all the revelations, be it the Psalms of David, be it the Torah, be it the Evangel, be it the Quran, all of it is referred to as the book, which is the revelation of God to his messengers. So God gave the book, meaning books between brackets, and wisdom. Wisdom is given to prophets and messengers. They don't need to work hard to acquire it. It's given to them. Now, as far as wisdom for all of us, we need to learn it. We need to work on it. However, some among us are given wisdom as a bonus. And God mentions that in Surah Al-Baqarah, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا God chooses a few among us and he gives them that ability. They are not prophets. They are not messengers. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ O Luqman, thank God because he has given you the gift of wisdom. So Luqman got it. He didn't have to work hard on it. However, for the rest of us, the majority of us, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ The difference between purifying our inner selves, this is something that is not taught. It is an outcome of other things that we do, and we find that purification of that inner self as an outcome. As for wisdom, we've got to learn how to be wise. And all of this just to bring us to something very important that explains why we seem to be running after peace and peace is running away from us. It's not because God wants to torture us, but it's because we are running after peace without being fit to run. When you want to run a marathon, you need to exercise for months upon months in order to be fit enough to run in a marathon. And if you want to run after peace and get peace and keep peace, you need to be fit. And that fitness is called wisdom. That fitness is called wisdom. We have lost it. We are dealing with issues outside the home with anger, with 
reactionism not with proactivity but it is reactivity we are unable to live with each other we are fighting with each other we are killing each other we are you know and i don't want to talk about that peace outside the house we are here to talk about peace inside the house peace inside the house is something that we are missing even though god told us told us that the purpose of marriage and the purpose of coming together to live in a home is to discover what he mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Rum as Sakina. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The purpose of this marriage is that you dwell with peace and tranquility with each other. However, we know that living without peace is not the problem of Muslim families because I want to make sure that all of us understand the reason we are talking about promoting peace and, you know, discouraging, not discouraging, preventing Preventing violence is not an Islamic problem. It is a problem across the spectrum. You probably have read statistics that every nine seconds in North America, there is a woman who is violently assaulted every nine seconds. Imagine since I started speaking until now in North America. And when I looked at statistics, I, I moved on. I, I couldn't, not that because I wanted to ignore those statistics, but because uh, I, I felt that the more I would read, the more upset I will get and the more I will get away from an academic uh, 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 dealing with this issue in such a short period of time that we have. Here we are coming this afternoon to talk, to converse. And what I'm doing in the 25 minutes is just to, you know, have the mindset to get us started to talk. Because someone who may bring an idea in 30 seconds may be more positive than probably my whole 25 speech that I will give before you. I just again want to come to the point that at home... We understand that there are many pressures, many challenges, realities, uh, variables. Uh, you know, not uh, all families are similar to each other. Actually, the reality is each family is unique. Each family has its own variables. Each family has its own circumstances, even though we may be living in the same neighborhood. But the accumulation of the different variables whether it is economic, whether it is psychological, whether it is religious, whether it is uh, world problems, whether it is health problems, whether it is uh, uh, the kind of profession that either the husband or the wife, whether it is education, whether you know, put these things together and you will find scientifically that each family has a unique set of circumstances that leads to how the interaction within the family is done in a dynamic fashion. Unfortunately, many people deal with their circumstances in a way that is determined by their whims and desires without any wisdom. And this is something if the Quran says, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came to teach us, it seems, either, either we are bad students, we don't have the ability to comprehend the content of the courses that comprise Islam, or the courses are too difficult for our purpose, we are unable to, to, to deal with those courses, 
or we're not studying enough, or the teacher did not do a good job uh, uh, in teaching us that content in order to end up creating that wisdom that we need to carry with us outside and inside the home. Now, I would like to admit that it is more related to the students than it is to the teacher. We know that. And I'm not here defending the teacher. I am here because of the short period of time to say that little, little is the number or small is the number of people who may claim that they have the knowledge of how Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught the wisdom in living inside our home. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, demonstrated through his own, what we call sunnah, through his own tradition, how to deal with difficult issues. And by the way, if the Almighty God wanted to provide Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with the peace of mind, he would have given him life inside his home that is just perfect, made by God in order for him to enjoy it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him normal set of circumstances so that by him dealing with those issues inside his households, and we know he had different households, he would teach us how to deal with those circumstances with wisdom that he came to teach us. So he demonstrated things by example, not by just talking about them. He told us things from the Quran, but he lived them himself. He wanted us to learn his sunnah, the wisdom behind his sunnah, so that we can do the same thing if similar circumstances were faced by us. Unfortunately, very few among us claim that they have that knowledge. And that's why two weeks ago, I suggested that the only solution we have in front of us is to learn the sunnah, the prophetic tradition of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and to live by that tradition. And unless we do that, we will continue to rely on our own personal decisions. And we've seen how each one of us failed miserably when it was purely a personal decision without the framework of the Sunnah and the Quran, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to teach. So, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ So, wisdom has to be taught. It cannot, you cannot, unless you are one of those fortunate ones that were given wisdom by Allah, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ If you are one of those, like Luqman, for example, that were given wisdom as a bonus, as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a different story. But very few are those who were given that with very few. So what shall we do? What shall we do? I am very proud, very proud that I am seeing that Dr. Ba'ubaid and the Yasmin and Rina. You know, when I say that, I am saying our generation represented by Dr. Ba'ubaid and the other generation represented by Hina and Yasmin. Now, when they are starting this campaign of promote, honor, prevent violence, even though I can tell you that the majority of them did not live violence, did not get married yet, why would uh, Yasmin and Hina uh, get so enthusiastic and gather a team of more than 30 youth who are working on a campaign with enthusiasm. You know, I tell you, I tell you, Yasmin, I don't like to put you on the spot, either you or Hina, where are you, Hina? 
Yes. But their phone calls, their emails to me, I just felt so small because when I would tell them I'm busy today, I, can, I felt that, what am I doing? They exuded so much enthusiasm that I felt that the future belongs to them and the answer is found with them and they have been working on learning wisdom and living that wisdom so that the future God willing may witness that violence will come down and honor will prevail and that's why the title of your campaign is brilliant it is something you should be congratulated for it is something that we the people who are now looking at trying our very best in the last call it one quarter of our life one third whatever you want to call it okay my family got upset with me when i told them now you know how I'm feeling that I'm getting ready for the exit. Okay, they got upset with me. Okay, and I'm not talking about it, you know, in a destructive manner. But the reality is that the youth now are taking the baton and they are working on practical things. Because the first thing that Rida and Yasmin told me, they said, Amu, we don't want the speech to cover everything about this because we just wanted to lead to circles of discussion. Discussion is it, because you are going to mention certain uh, uh, ideas, talk about certain experiences you heard about, and to try to promote the honor that all the religious traditions came with. You know, start from Adam alayhi salam, going to Ibrahim, and then Musa, and Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. All of them came to spread honorable lives, honorable principles of living together. And again, if we go back to the Quran and try to learn what the recitation says as per the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we read in Surah An-Nisa how the Almighty God wanted us to realize that the honor that is given by God to men and women to live together with that common denominator called honor and respect is something that is not given to whether it is this gender or that gender as a, 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 a you know a, a, a privilege it is it is their right to live honorably it is not something that a husband decides to give his wife on the contrary you know uh, prophet muhammad peace be upon him taught us that it is an honorable person who lives honorably with his wife and it is alaim, alaim meaning someone who is lacking in honor and is spiteful who decides to live with his wife by taking that honor away from her. Again, I just want to give us this to stimulate the interest in talking about this hopefully whatever will come out of our circles of discussion will be beneficial i'm sure it will be beneficial but it will be beneficial in the sense that it can ignite a practical solution for a family by the way i I'm quickly now saying, what did I forget to mention? And very quickly, if you allow me two minutes, no more than that. This should have been in the heart of what I said, not at the end. But I would like to say that uh, there are many people, many people who try to hide 
what is happening inside their family. It is like someone who is feeling ill and goes to the doctor and doesn't tell him all the symptoms or tell her all the symptoms because they are afraid of what the doctor may tell them. You know, that doesn't change anything of what you are experiencing. So you'd better tell the doctor everything. And I would like to say that it is healthy to go to the doctor and tell the doctor. And we have doctors now, we didn't use to have the MRC uh, a few years back. Now we are fortunate that other communities in Kingston, in Ottawa, in, in Toronto, in Oakville, uh, they are saying, please come and teach us how we can establish similar institutions. We started in London, and London can be an icon for the future to deal with domestic violence. Let us not hide reality. We know that immigration is, is a major contributor to the stresses of family dynamics. And there are many immigrants who experience that simply because the husband, in most of the cases, uh, does not master the English language. And because he does not master the English language, he's finding difficulty finding a job. And he used to be someone who is recognized in his community back where he came from. And now here, he is uh, uh, drowning in an ocean of, 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 of people who may have similar problems. So a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer is no more recognized in the same way as he used to be recognized back home and the uh, 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 other contributor is that they used to live at a certain economic standard no more because now there's no job there is uh, you know there are other things because of the cultural stresses because of the global challenges that all of us are experiencing because of Islamophobia, which is the byproduct of this global challenge that all of us are experiencing today. Put all of these things together and it will produce a message similar to one I heard on YouTube two days ago. Someone put on YouTube a message to his fellow countrymen back in Lebanon telling them, please, please, listen to what I have to say. You know, coming to this side of the Atlantic is not as rosy as it was made to look for us before we left our country. Because when you come, there are certain realities we were not told about. And he wasn't trying to paint Canada with a negative brush, but he is telling them realities that many people uh, uh, try to dismiss. So the reality is immigration with all its branches and sub-branches is creating this disease called domestic violence. Plus, there are other factors, we know that there are uh, people who are violent by nature, not because of their religion, but they are violent by nature. These are people we need also to uh, bring out and, 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 and try to help. Uh, and there are also uh, you know, people who uh, are caught by misinterpretations of certain uh, uh, noble principles, this is for our Imams to help uh, those people in trying to understand those things, even though now uh, religion is being kidnapped away from its sources where it has to be taught uh, by the rightful uh, scholars who have the know-how of teaching. Unfortunately, today you will find someone who listened to an unknown entity who is, you know, uh, who, who self-claimed himself to be 
uh, an interpreter of what Islam or Christianity or Judaism is all about. And there are people who listen to such uh, uh, dangerous uh, uh, people and we are finding so many different interpretations that we hope can be given back to where they can be properly interpreted. So many things. Let us start somewhere. Again, thank you very much, Rina. Thank you very much, Yasmin. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I'm looking forward to joining in those circles of discussion. Inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.